these initiatives do not look very well informed because Africa has changed a lot over the last 20 or so years, 25 years. But these initiatives seem to be based on the old model of aid and using uh, aid as lev to leverage both uh, policy reforms and uh, this time around leveraging also aid to drive private investment to make Africa absorb more capital. But um, the, the two things which assumptions which are actually false. Uh, one is that uh, there's a shortage of capital. There is no shortage of capital. There's a lot of capital around the world. In fact, it's competing um, to find places to be invested. And Africa is attracting actually a lot more capital than it can probably absorb. So what the Europeans should do is come to terms with the fact that they need to compete for investment opportunities, the limited investment opportunities. Because relative to the amount of capital available in the world, African investment opportunities are small. Because we are small economies and we are not large markets. So you can't invest $20 billion in one project. Even 200 is quite big. Uh, so the scale of the capital that wants to be invested and the Opportunities on the other side, they don't match. So trying to force feed uh, the continent more capital uh, is bound to make the sort of mistakes that uh, we saw leading to the global financial crisis the other day. You know, pushing, pushing, pushing capital. This time it was pushed into the housing market and it led to uh, uh, an explosion. So that, that's a problem of capital. If it has nowhere to go, it uh, really will go anywhere. The second assumption is that Africa is very risky. Um, and if you have a lot of capital going into a place, then probably those people don't perceive the risk as, as much as you do. Uh, it, but what that seems to fail to recognize is that uh, Africa is very diverse now. You have countries which are emerging uh, markets, both politically stable and democratic, as well as uh, middle income. And they are no different from other emerging markets, and they are attracting a lot of capital. They're fairly low risk sort of investments. You still have what you call fragile states on the other end of the scale. Um, you have a failed state like Somalia. So there is no one place called Africa. Yeah? And these initiatives do not seem to uh, recognize. Um, so, we, but Europe seems to still think that uh, it has a certain responsibility and you need to maintain uh, a disproportionate uh, economic engagement with Africa. Uh, so there's a bit of an asymmetry there. Uh, we want uh, a much more diverse, diversified economic uh, relationship with the rest of the world. We want uh, proportionate trade with Europe, but also with Asia and within Africa and also places. Uh, we want uh, diversified investment so that we are not too dependent on, on one source. Because if you are too dependent on one source, then it has a lot more leverage that, than you want. Uh, so do we need documents which uh, reinforce the historical relationship uh, where Europe dominates? No, we don't. Um, if you look at uh, the global economy now, manufacturing has shifted mostly to Asia. Africa produces, trades predominantly in natural resources. So it follows that, uh, that Africa's natural resources will go where manufacturing is happening. Similarly, Europe is not leading in the export of manufacturers. We import manufacturers. So it follows naturally that uh, the biggest uh, sort of trade comparative advantage at the moment uh, links Africa with Asia. And that's what you observe. So, and Europe, for instance, is the center of the markets, global markets which are closest to Africa. So when African countries are now raising like sovereign debt, they raise it in the euro dollar market. Okay, and I think uh, a few weeks ago, Senegal became the 16th African country to debut in the euro dollar. A loan market, there's about $30 billion of, of money outstanding that African countries have borrowed in the last seven, eight years or so. The other capital you see is what you call private equity. 
And we have quite a number of uh, a growing private equity industry domestically, and uh, which is investing mostly in small and medium enterprises, which is quite good because those are the ones which create jobs and, 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 and equitable growth. And most of them are actually raising capital in Europe. They raise capital even from DFIs, like uh, the, the FMO, Dutch FMO organization and others. Those in turn raise money from uh, you know, European pension funds and other, and other market players. So as far as market, capital market uh, interactions are concerned, I think Europe is going to continue to be an important uh, sort of the Europe-Africa uh, engagement. What I don't see much uh, hope for is this idea of leveraging aid to drive more private uh, capital into infrastructure. Uh, first, because if you look at where private capital can go into infrastructure, it only goes into three sectors which are profitable. Telecoms, which is now mostly private, and that's which absorbs to a lot of capital, and that sector has no problem raising capital. Then you have power. Uh, power generation, again, you see a lot of private capital going in there um, without much sort of uh, intermediation through governmental type programs. You see a little going into uh, transport type things, uh, but mostly also profitable. But when it comes to the real, what you call public goods type infrastructure, roads especially, not major highways, rural access roads, for instance, uh, water and sewer range, sanitation type things, small scale irrigation. Those are pure public goods. And I don't see actually the scope for much private capital. There seems to be some heroic mm -hmm. efforts to see how uh, this sort of investment can be packaged uh, for private investors. I think they're going to fail spectacularly uh, if, they go, <laughs> if they go that route. And those which can also, private capital usually cherry picks the profitable things, which is fine, because if they are able to finance the profitable things, then pure public money can go to the pure public good type things. So this is the kind of conversation that uh, we should be having.